Man, it's a regular guy. Man, we got one for you today. Um, I just got in some stuff. I got this two-point sling from Tier 1 Citizen, Abner Miranda, and I'll talk a little bit about it in a few minutes. I have another video talking about it, and I've decided I'm going to change it and put it on my AR 9mm, the Black & Decker, as I call it. Some of y'all have seen it before. Um, let's see. This little bad boy, it, it doesn't really, hadn't been running with a sling or anything like that, but I'm, I'm going to put one on it, and I'm going to put the, uh, I got some MWAT rails and stuff in. You'll see them in a second. And uh, you know what? Let's just jump right into it. Let's see what's going to happen here. So I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way, and I'll be right back. How about that? <laughs> okay, first things first. Uh, let's make sure this weapon's unloaded. It is. Let's get this uh, thing apart. This is the uh, buffer QD mount that I'm going to replace right here. There's another QD mount on it. It's kind of more of an H&K style. Then I got the uh, M-Lock. It's going to go on the front rail right here. This one always gives me a fit, to be honest. These nuts seem to want to spin around and stuff like that on me. So they give me a fit. So I'm going to do the other part first. We checked it to make sure it was clear. All right, let's get this thing apart. Uh, this AR is a little bit, uh, tolerance is a little bit tight on the upper and lower receivers. It's kind of hard to get apart, to be honest. I'm going to set that over there, and I normally just use, if you've seen my disassembly video, I normally just use the charging handle there to press down a little D10 in here to get the buffer spring out. Uh, there's a reason you take the buffer spring out. Uh, I'll show you why here in a minute. Uh, let's see here. Where's my little tool at? Uh, actually, I'm going to use a little one right now. Sometimes I have a, uh, use a big one, but this is a little one. I just kind of keep it attached to this cleaning kit. And uh, sometimes these things give me a fit, but... Uh... <clears throat> All right, I think we got it going here. Just spin this castle nut around. I'm just gonna do it all, back it all the way off. Now there's a little spring in here. You do not want it to fall out because it will kind of jump out and go everywhere. All right, all right, the spring. You can see it, it's in there. This plate holds it on. And yeah, basically you don't want to lose it because if you lose it, your uh, takedown pin is going to fall completely out if you lose it. So I'm going to just unscrew this. I'm going to try to keep... Okay, it sounds like uh, my pin just, one of my pins just flew out. I'll find it in a second. See, this is what I was worried about. I should have kept pressure on the little, there's a little plunger spring in here that uh, holds your buffer tube in and I didn't keep the pressure on it and it slipped away and shot right off which can happen all right so that's out and then that's off all right part one complete okay as you see I found the little detent spring it was like 10 foot over that way that's reading like I said you don't want to let this thing uh, go off of there because it it's like heck trying to get this thing to find it again and go back especially if you lose the spring out of it all right, I'm gonna put my little QD on here. Uh, let's see if this thing's gonna work right. Get it lined up. There's a little detent in here that can only go on one way. Huh. Actually, it looks like the little detent in here is slightly too long. You know what? I'm gonna, uh, where's my, I got a couple of files. I'm gonna file this down to make sure it fits right. Um, let's see. I'm gonna make you watch me do all this work. I'm gonna rub the top and I'm gonna do the sides because it looks like it's got some coating on there. I'm gonna try to get it off. I'll be right back. Okay, it's about five minutes of my life that I'm never gonna get back now. All right, I got the uh, QD mount on there. I made sure it fit. All right, so what I did, just so everybody can see, I took this flat file right here and I ended up putting it over there in the vise and I just ran it over it a bunch of times to get the, uh, it's got like a black rubber coating in here and on here just to get it down just a little bit because it was a little bit too tight and it would not slip over here because this little detent goes, there's a little track for it and it was just kind of too tight, too tall, it would not go. Then I took this little uh, triangular file and I ran it on the sides just to make sure that I didn't flatten out part of it by, uh, when I was, uh, filing it down that it didn't turn a mushroom down because then it wouldn't work in the track either. I also took this uh, file and I just ran it around in here a few times like this just to get a lot of the, the black rubberized coating off of it because it was just kind of making it sticky where it would not go on here because it's a pretty tight tolerance as it is. Now I've got my uh, castle nut all the way back and I'm going to try putting this QD mount all the way back. That way it give me plenty of working room here. Let me try and get this thing on. It's still pretty tight, I'll be honest, even after that filing down. You can definitely tell a difference now. Before, it's like this thing was not moving. It was not going to go on there. All right. Now, just to show, 
that spring and the uh, little detent right here, it's just basically holds your buffer in, and your buffer and your buffer spring assembly. So this is gonna have to be pressed down with pressure by my thumb when I'm putting it on there, or my index finger, which one. I'm gonna try to hold it with my thumb currently. All right, and this spring is in there that holds in my takedown pin. I'm gonna try to spin this as far as I can to get it on here. So let's see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go with the righty tighty, lefty loosey. I'm gonna try to move this back as far as I can so I got the maximum working room I can. When I feel this thing start to touch my thumb inside there, I know that it's I'm getting pretty close. All right, I'm feeling it touch my thumb, which means I'm getting close in here. So see, it's holding down the takedown pin in here, which is what I'm looking for. Let me see if I can get one more turn. I may not be able to because of this uh, little spring right here. Let me see if I can press this spring and get one more turn out of this, just to make sure. I've... I guess not. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna have to have one more turn. See, it popped out right there. That shows it's not quite far enough in there. So I need to get, but this QD mount is big and round and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get one more turn in this or not. So let me press down on it. I'm gonna try to keep this in the camera where you can see it. All right, I got past it. Let's see here, I'm gonna press this spring in. Uh, yeah, this is a flat one. See if I can get it past this QD mount one more time. All right, I think that's about all the turns I'm gonna be able to get out of this QD mount right here. As the, the tolerance, like I said, is super tight on this thing. Come on, get one more little half turn. There we go. All right, I think that's about all we're gonna be able to get out of it. Now, I've got this detent right in the, there's a, there's a, a small little notch out of your buffer tube and that's right where it's sitting right now. So that's where you want it to be. Now I'm gonna to try to slide this QD ring full forward to help hold that spring in. The spring is the same one, like I said, that's holding this takedown pin in. Like I said, this uh, QD mount is pretty dang tight right here around this thing. That may be as far as it's gonna go. Now I'm gonna adjust the castle nut while keeping this thing straight. I got it back on there pretty good. Make sure this buffer tube is straight. If you don't have it straight, your stock is not going to be straight. So. All right. Now, let's see if I can get turn in the camera and get this little hook on here. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to tighten up this castle nut, but I'm just putting a little bit in there. All right. I notice there's a little space right here, but it doesn't really matter. It seems like there's a good snug fit in this QD mount right here. I don't know, I might end up taking it off and trying to file it down some to get even a, a, a tighter fit, but I don't know, it feels, yeah, it's, it's just not going anywhere. It feels super tight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna work fine. It's gonna work really good. Okay, now let's make sure this takedown pin is working correctly, and it is. I'll put my buffer tube or buffer assembly back in, my spring, and then my buffer back in. There it goes, and it's held in place. So, all right, that seems to be that's working pretty good. I might end up trying to make some kind of spacer or something for this thing. I mean, it feels fine, but I don't know. It just you don't notice it unless you like look with a microscope. You know, I just don't want it to look janky or something. So, all right, now. We'll move on to the real pain of my existence. Okay, the real pain of my existence, it's always these M-Lock mounts. I'm telling you, I don't know why, that they give me a fit for some reason. Um, some people out there are probably like, oh man, it's easy, but I don't know, that they give me such a fit you wouldn't believe. Because they get to spin it in there and I can't get them to go the right direction. All right, well this one's on like lockdown on this one. I don't know if it's got Loctite in there or what. Let me get this thing. See, that's what I get for not having my equipment already prepared, but I just kind of just opened it up. All right, I'm gonna try to get this put in there. I'm gonna try to keep it in the camera the whole time where you can see the M-Lock. Like I said, if you mess with the M-Lock very much, you probably hate it like I do. All right, there's that. I'm gonna reach in here with this and I'm gonna turn them just slightly so that they're make like a little T-junction and see if I can get this thing to actually catch right. Because if you don't, it's just going to spin around in there like crazy. 
if I get this the first time, this will be the easiest in lock setup I've ever done. You know what? I think this is the easiest one I've ever done. Most of the time they're spinning for five minutes on me. All right, there's that. Let's see here. A little tight, extra tight on both of these. Make sure one last little tighten. All right, we're good. All right. Now the reassembly, now that I have it on there. And I went over there and got my QD slings. I'm about to put it on there. This is actually a QD sling I got from uh, Tier 1 Citizen. And uh, if you know Tier 1 Citizen, uh, or if you know much about guns, you know about Tier 1 Citizen, Abner Miranda. Check out his channel. That dude is like a legend in his own time. This is, uh, this is his two-point tactical sling. All right, the tolerances are very tight on this, uh, this 9mm AR. Let's see if I can get it on there without giving me a fit, because uh, I'm telling you, it's, uh, it gives me a fit sometimes. Is you gotta have these married up like tight. Ah, that they actually went out pretty good. Let's do a quick functions check, make sure it's right. All right, work. Functions check's complete. All right, let's see if this QD mount's gonna work correctly. And I have used this uh, two piece mount or this uh, two point mount before or uh, sling. I've used it with the bungee part on this end. I've also used it with it on this end. According to Abner, it actually goes on your shoulder end. Uh, I've had it on the other end, so that way it seemed like you could manipulate the barrel a little bit easier. But I was trying it earlier, and uh, it seemed like... Uh, let's see here. It's not going in the detent correctly. When I was trying it earlier, I was like, oh, well, I like it this, this direction also. Okay, there we go. All right. Let me get my sling straight over here. He's locking pretty good. All right. Well, there you have it. The uh, nine millimeter AR with the uh, with the two point sling. I'm gonna give it a little little try over here. See how it goes. Well, that was a boatload of fun. Okay, not really. I gotta say, I had a few challenges that I was not really expecting on here. First off, you know, some of my challenges, uh, the QD mount didn't want to fit exactly right. The tolerance was a little too tight. I had to do a little file work on it, which you saw. Uh, other than that, uh, my because of the, the coating and everything on this, my original QD uh, just attachment did not want to go in here, so I had to swap it out on the sling, which, which is fine. <laughs> and I did not hold my plunger down, and it's a lesson learned uh, for y'all out there. I mean, I should have known better, but uh, you let your finger slip off of it. The little plunger detent shot off like 10 feet. You saw that on it. The easiest part is what I thought was going to be the hard part, mounting the, the front M-lock attachment right here. Um, I mean, so far, this is this is my go-to right here. Um, this is this is a good, you know, truck gun, you know, whatever. I have a video about it on it being the truck gun. I mean, I do like this uh, arm brace that's in it. I mean, it's pretty good, especially with the red dot. I like it quite a bit and it works good for me. The sling, I shortened it uh, enough that it's gonna kind of just hang in front. And I don't know, some people like to run their arm through the sling and whatnot. I kind of just like mine, you know, just kind of hang straight down in the front. I like it, it comes up pretty quick, quick target acquisition and whatnot. So, I mean, sometimes I put my cheek on here, but hey, I'm not touching my shoulder. <laughs> y'all know out there, y'all know the business. Uh, other than that, I like it. This thin sling fits pretty good inside my Black & Decker box right here. So, I mean, whatever. If you've had any trouble with uh, putting on the QD mount or if you've had any reactions to the uh, sling, the two-point from Abner Miranda, hey, let us know. If you haven't seen this channel, check it out. I like it. I'm going to get some more stuff from him. That's a regular guy's opinion.